Yo, what's going on guys, it's Actics here, finally bringing you guys another tutorial, and as requested, I'm going to be uh, showing you guys in this video how to design a custom logo, like template, or basically the setup for you uh, or your clan mates. So, first things first, uh, you're going to have to pick whether or not you want it to be 3D uh, or 2D, so I'm just going to go for 3D design because this is more professional and looks better in my opinion. So let's just get right into it. You're going to have your logo. Make sure you have an AI. Hold Alt on your keyboard. Click Extrude Nerves. There we go. Let's uh, go to the Object tab and increase the depth a bit. There we go. That should be good. And now we're going to do, there's different, there's many, many different ways of doing logo setups. But I've noticed that the very popular one nowadays is having the circle with a very bright color. And, uh, and then putting a nice material on the logo. So first, let's just do that. Bring in a cube. See the orientation right here. Make it Z minus. I would uh, let's see. Turn down the radius a bit, and then make this all the way down. And then you're just going to push this behind, all the way behind the logo. There we go. This is a bit too thick. So, and uh, I think we're going to just gonna increase this a little bit more. Right. Let's just take the move. Right, there you go, radius. And then center. I'm just going to make the logo a bit thinner too because it looks a little disproportionate. And um, there we go. So we've got our logo. And what I like to do is usually I like to make the logo be a tad bit larger than the circle. And so then, obviously, let's just bring in a material. So double click here. We've got a color. And this is my basic material like setup. So if you guys want to copy it, that's fine. Right click the sphere up here. Object, soft shadow. There you go. Go to the color tab. Click on color. And I'm just going to make it like a greenish that. Uncheck specular. Go to reflection. Texture. Resonal. So I know this is kind of fast, but you guys can just pause the video and go back to it. And then just turn down the brightness uh, and the mixed strength here. So that'll give you a bit of, um, of a uh, reflection on the material, which will look pretty good. Let me just bring in a Lightroom very quickly. Not, not my Lightroom that I use, so it's very quick for the sake of the video. And then, uh, let's see, for the logo, I'm just going to use a scratched material, so low texture. Scratched metal, no. Then you're going to click on copy channel right here, and then you're going to go to the bump uh, layer, and then go to the arrow, load, wait, where is it, paste channel. And then just turn up the strength all the way up to 100. And uh, basically bump, what it does is, as you can see here on zero, it's got no indentation, but if it's on 100, uh, based on the image, it'll like put little indents and the scratches into it, so it'll look more realistic. Now, the rotation or the inclination of the logo is one of the biggest parts of this, so you're just gonna wanna select both. Go to your rotate tool. And then just, what I do, a lot is just rotate up and to a side so just like that uh, and then obviously make sure your logo looks sort of natural on here because the rotation kind of messes it up there we go that should be okay like that and uh, so let's just make sure your render settings are good so you're going to go to output I usually uh, render them with the the preset which is 1024 by 768 then on save, you want to make sure that the format is PNG and alpha channel is selected. This is essential if you want to make sure that there's no background to your render and it's just your render. Then we're going to bring in ambient occlusion. So just right click down here or go to effect and then global illumination. And these two just uh, greatly increase the quality of your render. So for example, if I were to just render this part very quickly, we can get an idea of what it would look like. So there we go. That looks, that looks pretty decent. That's not bad at all. 
uh, I can tell that the tube has a bit of like some uh, non uh, spherical edges so we're just going to increase the rotation segments make sure that it's nice and smooth there we are and uh, so yeah let's just go ahead and there we go that seems perfect and uh, oh and also when you have a material like for example like something like this a scratched metal it's essential for you to go into the material setting so after you've dragged and dropped it onto your your whatever your logo or whatever you want to click on the material here See where it says projection the um, default is UVW mapping but that's that's very wrong because if you have this on uh, you can't even see it so you want to make sure that you have it on cubic and that seamless is checked seamless makes sure that there's no for example like this that this doesn't show up that there's no rough edges that everything is just a continuous texture so I'm just gonna render it, render this out real quick and we'll be right back in Photoshop all right so now we're in Photoshop and it's done rendering and it's a very simple render and uh, but that's fine because now we're just gonna play around with it and add some cool effects to make it look good so first things first without even looking for a CC or anything just duplicate your render so control J or Command J if you're on Mac. On the duplicate, which is on the top, make sure you go to Filter, Filter Gallery, and then you're gonna go down to Stylize and then Glowing Edges. These are my settings, I've been using these, so I'm not sure if these are the default or not, but I haven't touched these at all. So 173, just click OK. And then it's gonna make it look all weird, but that's fine because your duplicate is still right under it. So then you're gonna go on the one that you just applied the filter to, you're gonna change the, the blending mode to overlay, and then just turn down the opacity. And what this does is it adds a bit of darkness everywhere, and it sort of uh, adds to the So, very little touch, but that's something that I always do. Uh, now let's go ahead and look for a color correction. So I'm just gonna drop this into my CC pack, and um, for those of you that know, don't know, this is for sale. These are all CCs that uh, I have edited and and or made myself so if you guys are interested i think there's over like 80 color corrections in here it's, it's huge uh and so just go ahead and try out different uh color corrections i think this is usually my favorite yeah this is gonna, this one's gonna be perfect so let's just drag and drop that back into our setup here uh let's add a background so black so make a new layer put it under everything Make sure that your front color is black, so there you go. And then an alt backspace, and that's the shortcut for fill. So, uh, for example, the front if the front color is orange, for example, you hit alt backspace, and it makes it orange. And then if you, you see the white color here, that's the back, that's control backspace. So those are the two shortcuts for fill. I'm just going to leave it black, though. There we go. And apply the color correction. So, uh, first thing I notice is that the lighting is sort of messed up on my render, but that's fine. We can just fix that up immediately. Um, what I would do is I would just, let's see, use the polygonal lasso tool. And then we're, we're just going to select our logo like so. Let's get it all the way around. So we only need the, the front. Go. And then you're going to do well, the, the same shortcut that I told you before, so control backspace, and then control D to unselect everything. So I'm just going to make that overlay, and just like that, it's lighting everything up. But however, this is a bit too much, so just go to your eraser, make sure your opacity is on like, okay, soft eraser, this is essential, soft brush. Uh, pretty large size, so 180, and then opacity down to 35, and then just click on the parts that are a bit too bright, like so, and that'll fix it up for you. There you go. So that's starting to look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, now, now we need to make sure that this is the right dimension. So the correct dimensions for a logo is 800 by 800. This is for YouTube, Skype, all kinds of pictures. So 800 by 800, go ahead and make a new one. Uh, let's make a black background and then just drag and drop what we already have. So 
let's just merge our white layer because we're not going to need be needing it anymore. So just select the two and then control E. Shortcut sure to merge. Then we're going to go ahead and bring that in here. There we go. So the size is perfect. Let's go ahead and just center that. So just control A while you're in the in the move tool. Make sure you, uh, you're on this tool and then just do control A and then press this button right here and it'll center it. Like so. Right, yeah. So actually it's a bit too low, so I'm just gonna push that up a bit. There we go. Now we're gonna have to be now we're gonna have to like start checking out some stocks that we can use. So just close the CC pack. And this is my stocks pack. Obviously also for sale in case you guys uh, were interested. So this is this is one of my like honestly there's no other packs that I've seen um, as complete as this. It has a bunch of stuff that I always use. And it's it's the only pack that I use. So if you guys are interested in purchasing this, just let me know and send me a message on YouTube or on Skype. So let's cut back to the chase. Let's get some lighting in here. So this uh this one is already made obviously but you can uh, make your own lighting using a or using a brush excuse me so i'm going to show you how to do that make a new layer get your brush uh get a pretty large size i'm guessing yeah 400 should be all right but almost 500 and uh you're going to get any color so let's just go with green it doesn't matter because we have a color correction on so color correction blue anyways and then with make sure it's, it's a soft brush. Uh, you're just gonna sort of make like a U here, like that. So there, it's, it goes a bit deeper in the center, and then just turn down the opacity. And so just like that, you've got lighting. Push the middle that I should go. Okay. Uh, I actually prefer the other one, so it's fine. There we go. Uh, so that's for your lighting. Now we're gonna just use some other basic stuff, like. Smoke. Uh, smoke is essentially like a, a basic stock, but it looks great, especially if you just have a low opacity on it. It can look very, very good. Let's just make it a slight bit bigger. So if you guys don't know what I just did there, the shortcut for like transforming something is Control T, and then if you hold Shift and drag on the top arrow, it will make sure that the ratio is the same, so it doesn't go like this. It doesn't go all messed up. So just hold Shift while you do that, and make sure that you. Nice and even. Then I'm just gonna sort of, uh, okay, so I'm just gonna go through all the shortcuts because I'm doing a lot of them now. Command J or Control J to duplicate, Control T, transform, right click, flip horizontal, and obviously what that does is it mirrors it. And so now that these two are here, we're just gonna go like that, have them blend a bit. So I'll just take off these lines that are clearly separating the two stocks, and so this way it looks a bit more natural. There we go. And then we're just going to select both, and turn down the opacity. There's something visible, but nothing too excessive. There we go, that should be perfect. So 50%, that's good. Now let's use a spec. And so these are like particles. Uh, this is a pretty old stock, but I, I still like to use it. And so then what I like to do is, uh, let's see, something like here, turn down the opacity a bit, and then use your eraser, and then just make it so that it's more visible on the very outer edges. So it'll just be like, uh, it's a very minor detail, but everything counts, the bells in the details. So just, I, I try to keep everything quite symmetrical. It's fine, man. You, should, you don't have to do any of this. Uh, just make sure that, you keep everything you want, just like that. There we go. That should be good. And uh, now we're just gonna apply some some of the last few things like the texture. So let's just get some grunge in here. That should be perfect. And we'll just put this right behind everything else. Like that. Get some nice grunge in there. So, let me just fix up this. All right. Uh, let's just, I think that's almost essentially it. So now we just need to add text, obviously. And you're just going to get your type tool. 
wait for it to open up. And uh, this is just the font that I've been using recently for local setups. It looks pretty decent. It's not bad at all. It's an old font, but it's great. So it's true lies, and then I'll just put Akatix, just like that. And if, for example, if it were a team, you would do the same thing. You just put like phase and then space, and then you let uh, the player be able to fill in names, then you put like change name here. And that way, it's more customizable. Uh, then for the color, on top of the on top of the color correction, you're just going to bring in a hue and saturation. So if it's not up here, just go down to this like little yin yang thing, and then go to hue and saturation, and then just put like change color here. Make sure the instructions are simple because you know players aren't very good at at this sort of stuff. So that way, whenever you scroll through the hue you'll be able to pick your own color. So let's just stick to the blue, which I like. There we go. And uh, text, make sure that it's either very visible or I would just turn on the opacity a tad just to make it look like it blends in more. And uh, that's actually it, guys. So this is a very basic text setup, or a logo setup, excuse me. So uh, this is this is what I would start off with. Then you can obviously start experimenting more and more with uh, whatever you use. Then, just to make it very simple for people that are in clans, um, so for example, let's say you're the clan leader and you want to make everybody logos, what I would do is I'd select all the stocks, so only the images, not the text or anything, drag and drop it into a group, call it setup, there we go. And that way, the only things that the that you have to worry about is just changing the name and then changing the color. So that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully, this helped you out because if it did, make sure you drop a like and a comment because I haven't uploaded a tutorial in a very, very, very long time. So I would really appreciate it if you could show this video some love. All right, guys. So peace out and stay sexy.